Yoel Romero is an old man that no one wants to mess with. The Cuban fighter who won silver in the 2000 Sydney Olympics made his debut in MMA at the age of 32. And by his late 30s, he was one of the best middleweights in MMA. Although he was 2.7 pounds away from becoming an interim champion, he was never able to capture UFC gold. So how good was Yoel Romero actually? Hey guys, it's Keon, and today we're going to be talking about Yoel, Soldier of God, Romero. Although he's no longer with the UFC, Yoel is 43 and still one of the most exciting free agents in MMA. So his career may continue after this video video, but it will no longer be at the highest level of the sport. So in this video, we're going to take a look at his MMA career to really understand how good he was. But before we get to it, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video, but even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. The best part is that all the money goes to charity. This month it was donated to Toy Mountain Toronto, which is a campaign that provides toys to families who are struggling to make ends meet. And this means a lot because we all know how tough it can be financially during the holidays, especially during these times. So thank you to the Undisputed and interim members for making this possible. And if you want to donate, all the info will be down below. Now let's get to it. You all made his MMA debut on December 20th, 2009 at the age of 32. Prior to going pro in MMA, he was a freestyle wrestler who won many championships. He also took home silver in the 2000 Sydney Olympics. In 2007, he relocated to Germany where he joined a professional wrestling league. And shortly after, he began to make his transition into MMA. His first fight was against Sasha Weinholter. You all immediately took him down. And although Sasha got back up right away, he got clipped by a left hand that knocked him down. Yoel began to rain down the punches, but Sasha managed to get back up once again. Then Yoel connected with an uppercut that dropped him. He threw more ground and pound before the ref stepped in. The fight lasted 48 seconds. He came back 10 months later to fight Mikhail Fialka. The two started the fight by feeling each other out on the feet. But once Yoel started to mix in the takedowns and ground and pound, the momentum started to sway his way. This led to more success on the feet. The fight eventually ended in the third by TKO retirement. Following this victory, Yoel fought Nikita Petrovs. The two opened up the fight by trading on the feet. Then Yoel secured the takedown. And I guess the pressure was too much for Nikita as Yoel won by another TKO retirement. But this time it took less than 3 minutes. 2 months later Yoel fought Laszlo X. He connected with a left hand that rocked Laszlo. And Yoel followed this with a combo of punches that knocked him out cold. The fight lasted 33 seconds. After going 4-0 he made his Strikeforce debut on September 10th, 2011. His opponent was former Strikeforce light heavyweight champion Rafael Feijal Capricante. Although Yoel looked good on the feet for most of the fight by pressing forward with heavy punches punches, Feijal survived and connected with a spinning back fist that dropped him. Yoel got back up but ate more punches and a knee that knocked him down once again. Feijal threw ground and pound before referee Dan Mergliata stepped in, handing Yoel his first pro loss. He was out for more than a year following this defeat due to a neck injury. And by the time he came back, Strikeforce was bought out by the UFC. So Yoel made his debut with the promotion on April 20th, 2013. His opponent was Clifford Starks. And it was also Yoel's first fight at middleweight. And he delivered big with a first round finish by connecting with a flying knee and punches. Six and a half months later, Yoel fought Hani Marks. For most of this fight, Yoel was the aggressor on the feet by connecting with the left hand. This led to a big left hand in the final round that knocked Hani down. Yoel followed this with more punches before referee Mario Yamasaki stepped in. Following this win, he fought Derek Brunson. And once again, he controlled the action on the feet before connecting with the left hands that knocked Derek down in the third. Yoel threw ground and pound, which included nasty elbows to the body before the referee stepped in. Three months later, he fought Brad Tavares. Although this was Yoel's first fight to go all three rounds, he was dominant by outstriking and out wrestling. Tavares. After three rounds, Yoel won by unanimous decision. At UFC 178, he fought Tim Kennedy. Early on, it was Yoel who was controlling the pace of the fight by landing the better shots and stuffing the takedown attempts. But unlike his previous fights, he began to slow down near the end of the second, which gave Tim the opportunity to connect with punches that looked close to finishing the fight. But Yoel was saved by the bell and the action made its way to the third. Prior to the final round, Yoel received extra time to rest, which was very beneficial considering he was tired and almost got finished. But the fault was not on Yoel or his corner as the UFC cut man had to wipe off excess Vaseline, and referee John McCarthy allowed for extra time on the stool. Plus, the shots at the end of round 2 by Tim were illegal as he held on Yoel's glove while delivering the punches, so the two were even in terms of controversy. Then early in the third, Yoel connected with the right hand that dropped him. He followed this with more punches before finishing the fight with ground and pound. Yoel's next fight was his first UFC main event. His opponent was former UFC light heavyweight champion, Lyoto Machida. And for most of this fight, Yoel's pressure was too much for the counter striker and Lyoto. In the final round, Yoel secured a takedown and finished the fight with punches and brutal elbows. At USC 194, Yoel fought former Strikeforce and Dream middleweight champion, Ronaldo Jacare Souza. Yoel looked good early on the feet by landing a spinning back fist that knocked Jacare down. And he looked good on the ground where he threw punches. Round 2 was uneventful, but both men had their moments. And going into the final round, Yoel was slowing down. Jacare was a fresher fighter, which led to a barrage of punches on the feet, a takedown, and ground and pound. It was a very close fight that, in my opinion, could have been a draw. But in the end, Yoel won by split decision. After this victory, Yusada revealed that 
that Yuval tested positive for a growth hormone release stimulator called Ibutamorin. He stated that it was from a supplement that he took after the fight and that the banned substance was not listed on the label. USADA agreed after doing more tests and gave Yuval a 6 month suspension instead of the typical 2 years. Yuval went on to pursue legal action against the supplement company. We'll get more into that later. In the meantime, he came back at UFC 205 to fight former UFC middleweight champion Chris Weidman. Although Chris had his moments early on in this fight, so did Yoel and in the beginning of the third, he connected with a huge flying knee that knocked Chris down. Yoel followed up with more punches before Mario Yamasaki stepped in. This 8 fight win streak made Yoel the clear number 1 contender, but since the champion Michael Bisping was injured, Yoel fought for the interim middleweight championship against ultimate fighter the Smashes winner, Robert Whittaker. For most of this fight, the two traded on the feet. The momentum seemed to be in favor of Yoel who started off strong. Plus, Robert sustained an injury to his left knee from a kick. Regardless, he denied most of Yoel's takedown attempts. And as the fight went on, he was a fresher fighter who was landing the better shots. After 5 rounds, Robert won by unanimous decision. Despite this defeat, Yoel fought for the interim middleweight championship 7 months later at UFC 221. His opponent was former UFC middleweight champion, Luke Rockhold. Unfortunately, Yoel missed the 185 pound limit by 2.7 pounds which meant that he was ineligible to fight for the title. Regardless, the fight went on where most of the action took place on the feet. Luke connected with some nice kicks, but so did Yoel and overall, his pressure led to barrages of punches that did more damage. This led to a huge left hand in round 3 that knocked Luke down. Yuel followed up with another left hand on the ground before referee Mark Goddard stepped in. This win led to a shot at the title against champion Robert Whittaker, making it their second meeting. But once again, Yuel missed weight, and this time by only 0.2 pounds. Regardless, the fight went on, and much like the first one, it was very close. In fact, this one was probably even closer and better than their first meeting. Robert came out strong with pressure and volume for the first two rounds, while Yuel was looking to connect with the big punch. And despite his eyes shutting in the second by a jab, Yuel finally landed a big right hand. Robert went down and despite getting back up, he ate more shots and was on wobbly legs. Robert came back in the fourth with more volume, but at the end of that round, Yuel connected with the more significant shots. He then had a very dominant fifth round by dropping Robert with a left hand. Yuel looked close to another finish, but once again, Robert found a way to survive until the end. It was a very close fight and in my opinion, it should have been a draw. But after five rounds, Robert won by split decision. Yuel left this fight with a broken orbital bone, which led to a surgery that changed the appearance of his right eye. Despite this loss, Yuel went on to win his lawsuit against the supplement company that caused him to fail his drug test. So in May of 2019, he was awarded with $27.45 million. Yuel's manager stated that he doesn't know if he will receive the entire sum, but at the very least, he will get $5 million, which is still pretty good. But Yuel was just happy to clear his name and reputation. He came back at UFC 241 to fight Paulo Costa. This was a fight that had a lot of hype behind it, and it totally lived up to it. The two opened up the fight by knocking each other down, and that back and forth action continued throughout the fight. Yuel secured a couple of takedowns, but overall, Paulo was moving forward more and maintaining octagon control, and after 3 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. Despite this 2 fight losing streak, Yoel looked good in both fights, which is very impressive considering that he was in his 40s. And after being called out by champion Israel Adesanya, Yoel at the age of 42 fought for the middleweight championship at UFC 248. Despite the fight having a lot of hype going into it, and Yoel making the 185 pound limit, the fight was one of the most uneventful fights in MMA history. Yoel had his moments in rounds 1 and 2 with punches and kicks, while Israel did the same and was the aggressor with the leg kicks. The final seconds of round 5 was when the most action happened, but it was very hard to judge this fight due to not much really happening. But in the end, Israel won by unanimous decision. Although Yoel was supposed to fight on August 22nd, 2020 against Uriah Hall, he pulled out due to undisclosed reasons. Then on December 4th, 2020, the UFC released Yoel from his contract. This in my opinion was one of the most shocking cuts in a while. Dana White stated that the promotion was making some serious cuts, and with Yoel on a 3 fight losing streak and now 43 years old, the UFC was no longer interested in having the Soldier of God around. He has since found a new home in Bellator where he will be fighting at light heavyweight. And in my opinion, he's still a dangerous fighter regardless of his losing skid. So after going 13 and 5, how good was Yoel Romero actually? This man truly defied the laws of aging better than any fighter. For him to look the way he does in his 40s is incredible. But what was even more amazing was how he had the athleticism and power of a young man. His constant pressure must have been terrifying for many of his opponents. He came forward with power in both of his hands, and that same power carried through his kicks. His flying knees are probably some of the best that I've ever seen in MMA. He also had a strong chin and was an amazing third round finisher, and his defensive wrestling was perfect to keep the action on the feet. But I really wish we saw more offensive wrestling as well, which didn't happen as Yuel truly fell in love with striking, which is a shame because he is a world class wrestler, and his ground and pound was vicious. But after seeing how much success he found on the feet, I could understand why he looked for the knockout instead of grinding out a decision win. And he also had constant neck injuries which wouldn't be favorable if it got locked up on a takedown attempt. It's also a shame that he entered MMA at the age of 32, as by his late 30s which was the prime of his career, his weight cutting got more difficult and his cardio began to decrease. Plus those 
wars against Robert Whittaker were definitely career changing. If he started in his 20s, I definitely think he would have been a UFC champion. But for him to stay competitive in his 40s among some of the best fighters in UFC middleweight history is remarkable. Which is why I consider him as one of the best fighters to never win a UFC belt. And that's why I would give his MMA career an 8.5 out of 10. I do wish we got to see him move up to 205 with a promotion, because I believe he would have had a great chance in winning a championship in that division. I'm also happy that he cleared his name from the failed drug test, which is probably one of the biggest controversies in his career that many would have remembered him by. But now we will remember him for his entertaining performances and his charismatic personality. And with another chapter in his fight career on the horizon, we will definitely be seeing Yoel Romero soon. Bye. My name is Keon and this is my take on Yoel, Soldier of God Romero. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? please put in the comments down below because I'd love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all I have for now, so I'll see you in my next one.